yeah yeah take a take a good good look at this this is disgusting hello everyone this is a glorious return to a classic Jody Bruchon video and it's sort of a special one this is my Asus vivo book <sighs> my Asus vivo book 16 with a Ryzen 9 7940 HS M1605 XA dash EB 96 and this will be one of my first just straight up computer repair videos in a while now before I get started if you feel generous please go to my give send go which is give send go.com slash Jody 4k I bought this laptop on credit kind of overextended myself a little bit to get it so that I could produce more content for you guys and um, it would be really helpful if I could get to the goals so that the credit hit stops hitting me with interest and all that um, I'd appreciate it if you can't that's fine please enjoy the content now enough of my shilling I'm taking apart my own computer because this thing is overheating one of the ways that I got this computer much more cheaply is that I got it used through Amazon um, I've never bought anything used through Amazon so I wasn't sure what to expect everything was fine at first but it has started to overheat and it's gotten to the point that I can't render out a long video without it overheating I have had numerous issues um, related to modern standby but I found a hack to get around that but what I cannot get around is that I can't render videos with the damn thing make that a little brighter and if I can't render videos with the damn thing what was the point of me buying it in the first place you know I can still edit but if I can't do a long render without it rebooting or turning off or black screening then I'm screwed man the whole point of this computer the whole point of laying out like 600 something dollars for this computer was that I want to be able to do computer or to do to do content for you guys when I have idle time away from my office because uh, over there relative to the camera is my big editing desktop it's a beautiful Ryzen 9 but um, I don't know if you've ever tried to put a Ryzen 9 desktop on your back and take it somewhere so that you could use it in a different location it's not exactly possible especially that big bulky thing so take all the screws out of the bottom as is so common with all of these newer computers and you'll probably need a pry tool to start getting into it but as is also common with these newer computers once you've gotten a pry tool in there and I'm just gonna use my fingernail to pop it um, everything else just sort of cascades its way open from there yeah it's pretty satisfying how these newer computers they and by newer just just to be clear by newer I mean computers built in the last like six or seven years by the way I never looked at this and I only just noticed it maybe you can't see it from this angle but look at that look at that look at that where is it 202308 it was manufactured 202308 and I'm recording this 202406 this computer's 10 months old and I've only had it for about one or two months I do not know what the previous owner did with it I assume that that means this is 99% factory but you know where's the other 1% so um, first thing I noticed the battery's good the uh, one terabyte SSD is good Wi-Fi cards good now by the way this Wi-Fi card sucks it's a MediaTek it works fine in Windows but in Linux you're screwed this card's trash in, in, in Linux. It's just, there's no driver. There's no driver at all. You can't actually use it. It's a very frustrating thing, and the only solution people have offered for this is, oh, we'll just buy a new wireless card and put it in. Yeah, normal people can just do that, right? So anyway, I'm not normal people. I could put a different card in. I don't want to do that. It works in Windows. This is a Windows laptop. That's the end of it. Um, there is some RAM here. So just real quick to review m2 nvme ssd pci express x1 wireless card i hear a fire engine in the distance maybe you heard it too and 
I presume that's DDR5 RAM. Um, this thing has 16 gigs, so I assume there's eight soldered and eight there. Um, while I'm in here, as is custom for me, I'm going to check every one of these hinge screws, and that one's loose, and that one's loose, and that one's loose. Great. Not off to a good start. That one's loose, and that one's not loose, and that one's loose. So, five out of six hinge screws agree. Be loose for Jody. Uh, <laughs> so, what do we have in here? Um, I don't. I would love to know what this jumper is. I, I can't tell what that jumper is, but I, I would love to know. <laughs> I'll probably never know. Uh, let's see, is there anything else interesting in here? I mean, obviously this is the CPU, and I'm assuming that that's some voltage regulators. It's good to see that they that Asus finally saw fit to cool some damned voltage regulators. Um, there is empty space here. I'm noticing empty space around the battery here. And somewhere I read that you can replace this 50 watt hour battery with a much larger battery. I don't know 100%. I don't know if, that, if that's true, but... There's a bunch of empty space here that it just seems a shame that there's so much empty space here. And I, I do look at it and wonder what could I do with all this room. One of the things I thought about to deal with this overheating issue is maybe I could get another fan of some sort and stick it in here. Some sort of really thin fan to blast over this stuff. I have also, I probably will be putting thermal pads on this before the night is over. Let's go ahead and get this heatsink assembly out of here. So obviously there's a screw right here. Um, let's see, there's one here. It looks like the heat sinks probably are not attached to the fans. But my issue is an overheating issue. And as such, I suspect that the thermal paste, by the way, for here to get the heat sink up, I suspect the thermal paste is not great. Um, it is a Vivo book. It is not one of their big fancy gaming laptops that they put liquid metal in. See, the beauty of the gaming laptops is, uh, if you've seen my video where I did an Asus gaming laptop that had liquid metal, the liquid metal got out because it got squeezed out and it shorted components. And once I went through the Q-tip and some alcohol to remove the excess liquid metal, the computer worked without a single flaw. So, hang on just a second. I need to get... I need some heat sink paste. Well, let's go ahead and pull this off and take a quick look underneath. Ooh, that can't... Ooh, that was... That popped. Why did that pop? I don't like it. Oh, this is hard. These are hard. These... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. You can't see my face, but... This stuff is baked. I don't understand how the... F I almost cursed. I'm trying to keep this video from being throttled, but... Th okay. See this? Look. Look what I'm doing, okay? See that? Alright. Now, how much of it do you see on my finger? <laughs> There's none. This stuff is baked. How is this computer not even a year old and all of this heatsink goop everywhere is baked on. This has to be removed. I'm going to go and get um, a paper towel and some heat sink paste, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I have a paper towel. This is a high-quality paper towel. It's Bounty brand. I always use Bounty paper towels, not a sponsor or anything, because they don't disintegrate when you use them, which really pisses me off about most paper towels. This is Noctua, um, you may be able to see it here, this is Noctua Thermal Paste, NTH1. Now they have an NTH2 that's supposed to be better. I have not personally tried it, so I cannot vouch for it. But I use NTH1, I've also used Arctic Silver 5. Both of them are excellent cooler um, thermal pastes, so I recommend both of them. So what we need to do to get this darned Asus fixed, so I need to take this and I actually need more. I need this to be in more focus. Hold on just a second. Let me see if I can get this to where you can see what I'm doing. So, yeah, yeah. Take a take a good 
Good look at this. This is disgusting. So this paste here, it, it is not coming off. If you look at that, it, that is simply not rubbing off. It is pretty solid. So what we need to do with this, let me uh, flip the autofocus to make it easier for you to see things. Um, what we need to do with this is take this paper towel and gently we're going to rub hard. Oh my God, it won't come off. Okay, I have, now, my girlfriend was yelling at me for this thumbnail, okay? I understand, but this is why I have nails. Because that is stuck. And I basically need to scrape. Oh my God, I can't even scrape it. What the hell? Okay, this is way worse than I thought. This thermal paste is, uh, sometimes you just, hmm. Okay, I got some purchase on it. Now I'm going to gently tap it somewhere. Um, good God, that was bad. That was really bad. Okay. Now I know why it was overheating. <sighs> oh, this thermal paste is rough, dude. It's so bad. Okay. Push very firmly on the plate here. Yeah, there we go. Nice thumb action there. Give it some cleaning and in all directions. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at how beautiful that is. It's got a little bit of gashing, but yeah, that might be from the factory for all I know. These voltage regulators appear to have had thermal paste on them as well. So what I'm going to do is also get the voltage regulator paste off here. That, that's a little harder, actually. Hang on. This thing is very clumsy. Hold on. So, I need to get this thermal paste off here. God almighty. I am very happy to see that Asus is putting um, thermal paste on their V-Regs and not just the CPU. I have an Asus gaming laptop from about 2015. Um, no cooling directly on the voltage regulators for the i7 processor in it. I was not happy about that. There we go. That's clean. Now... Let's take a look at, I might have to move the ball on the tripod up. Nope, there's a hole. There we go. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. So here's our CPU. Here's our voltage regulators. Let's get the goop off the CPU too. You know what? I think autofocus can go away. We can be done with that now. Yeah. And let's get the goop off here. Gross. I'm applying firm pressure, but not too much. Um, I'm using my nail to help catch this heat sink paste and pull it up. Yeah. Don't want to be too rough with it, but you do have to be firm to get it all off. Um, these V-Regs, I've actually never removed thermal paste from a voltage regulator. So I'm a little annoyed here, but... Uh, yeah, scrape the top of them. What's going on down here? These look like MOSFETs, maybe. Let's get the goo off them, too. I don't know that I can get all the goo out. And the truth is, it probably would be best if I don't attempt to get all the goo out. I'll probably rip a surface mount component off if I try. Um, hang on, I'm going to get rid of this. And I think I'm going to get a Q-tip. Hold on. Yeah. The number one downside to using a cotton swab is that it, it's a cotton swab. Hang on, let me blow this. Get all the excess just out of there. Um, cotton can be left behind, and it's a bit of a problem. At the same time, a cotton swab is pretty gentle, so if it can be knocked loose without causing much damage, a cotton swab will probably get it done. And I mainly care about the surface of the V-Regs, not the, uh, the edges. So I'm mostly going to want to clean surfaces here. I don't want to put as much thermal crap as they did. And while i got a cotton swab here, I may as well go ahead and just break any of this loose too that is floating around here. So this is why it was overheating. I actually, hang on a sec. I actually was able to use something called the U Universal AMD Form 
um, browser to turn off modern standby that's something for another video um, disable modern standby and to also get rid of um, just any any setting that isn't in the BIOS was available through there so I'm noticing there's a big chunk right here and I don't like it I don't like any of it what is this Ugh. That's, that's pretty gross. Um, yeah, I'm not super worried about it, but if there's a big chunk just floating around right there, I don't... Oh, the fuck is that? You're not on, are you? Please tell me this thing is not on. You should not be on. Oh my god, don't be on. No, it's not on. Okay, I'm not too worried about it now. Well, I either uh, blew up my laptop or not, but whatever. All right. So, let's see here. All right, see the CPU there? Get a uh, little P of thermal paste there in the middle. And I actually like to spread thermal paste out a bit. I don't, I don't agree with the whole, oh, just put a big P in the middle, and that's, that's good enough philosophy. So, there's also supposed to be thermal paste on these inductors and regulators so I'm gonna go ahead and add some thermal paste on each of these not too much but enough I wonder why that one doesn't have any eh whatever alright alright and hopefully I didn't blow up the whole computer with whatever just crackled at me there it's not supposed to be on, so whatever. Um, a smarter man would have disconnected the battery here, and uh, I am not a smarter man, so yeah. Why are you still watching? I don't even know. Hey man, we all make mistakes. My hubris has led me to zap something in the computer, but it's probably okay, so I'm not super worried about it. Real quick, let's check this. This is, frankly, kind of a... Kind of a pitiful little heat sink, really, if you get right down to it. There's uh, not a whole lot going on there. So anyway, I'm going to blow it real quick. Just Heat sink is super clean. All right, now, whenever I reapply a heat sink... Actually, the fan looks like it could be a little gross, though. Yeah, I'm not super worried about that. All right. You know what? I still might hit everything with some compressed air if I can find it. Hang on. Uh, here we go. Compressed air. Compressed air. Oop, that is not what I meant to do. Mmm. Taste that bittering agent flavor. Okay, let's get this put down. Normally what I will do, let me get you a little zoom here. Normally what I do is I put this down where it's going to go and give it a little press to see what the paste actually does. So let's take a look. Okay, it uh, looks like the paste for the heat sinks it actually needs more um, it is not as I had hoped it is not a direct connection the heat sink paste for these things actually has to be piled up which is stupid but whatever I do not care if that's what it takes to keep it cool then that's what it takes man I'll do what it takes uh, the V regs I can see got much better coverage except for that one so there appears to have been at least some reason that they just sort of splatted on the heat sink paste in that corner let's go ahead and put it back down again see what kind of coverage we get again real quick gentle push and pop and it looks like Yep, everything's making contact, so if we screw it down, it should be good to go. And I should actually get several years out of this if everything holds up. Alright, let's start putting screws back 
Uh oh, my magnetism. I gotta magnetize my screwdriver. Hold on. I lost a screw because the magnetism let go. Where did it go? I do not see that screw. That bothers me. Um, crap. Well, I probably have one that will replace it from a kit, but uh, that bugs me. I lost a screw. Eh, it wouldn't be the first time. Not even close. So here, let's... I wish this lens was par focal. It is not, unfortunately. There we go. Let's brighten this up a bit, man. This is just so frustrating. That's better. Okay. Where did that screw go? I really need... Okay, I found it. Yeah, it was just hidden behind a tripod foot. Ironically, the thing I was trying to use to make this job a little bit easier. Yep. And come on, stay on the screwdriver, please. Thank you. Okay, there we go. And tighten that one more time. Normally, you're supposed to follow this number pattern. One, two... Oh, I kind of accidentally did, didn't I? Ha <laughs> ha! That's the way it happens sometimes, man. That's the way it happens sometimes. Eh, well. Yeah. Get that back down. Okay. That's good. Let's get... There was a black screw that went right here. And... There's a silver one that goes here. While I'm in here, um, I already checked these hinge screws. Just real quick, it doesn't hurt to check a few more. This looks like a duct for the fan. It really, it's it's not a bad idea to just poke every screw with a screwdriver just to see what happens. See if it feels loose. Don't over tighten the ones on the battery plastic, but yeah, just just want to make sure that everything is tight enough. Okay. Okay. Um I'm noticing there's not really much Otherwise, and one of the things that I like to do when I get into any of this kind of stuff, if I'm already in here and I'm already modding stuff, uh, one of the things I like to do is use thermal pads to bring this up to the actual chassis. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that this time, though. Because the thermal paste was such an obvious and serious problem with this one. I think I'm just going to not bother. I think I'm just going to... Well, real quick, I'm going to turn it back on and see if my product is destroyed by me doing whatever that shorted it out there a minute ago. And uh, let's see what happens. So, yeah, maybe you can, see a little, you can see all the dust. That's for sure. Yep, you're up. Ugh, gross. Um, yeah, you're going to have a hard time seeing that from up there, though. But it is working, so I didn't blow anything up, at least. Oh, God. So, it is working, but I'm not going to be able to, you know, do any of the stuff I need to do in a video like this. So, whatever. Anyway, bottom line, um, computer was made 10 months ago. It was manufactured, according to the label, 10 months ago. And it already has bad thermal paste, which implies they either used a crap thermal paste at Asus, or whoever got their hands on this for half a year before I did, used it to death. Like, almost literally just... 
used it till it overheated, returned it to Amazon, and they were like, oh, it passed the test, certified refurbished, used whatever, and I ended up with it. This is one of the reasons that I was happy to save $200 buying a used computer, because obviously, if a normie buys a used computer, this kind of thing is going to be an issue that A, they're not going to deal with because they're not going to run it hard enough to pull the crash as I have. I'm running video encoders that use everything on the machine. And B, um, if you buy used, you should know that you're buying used and therefore what you're getting isn't going to last as long. But that, like it says on the bottom of this, this computer is not even a year old. It, it should technically still have a manufacturer warranty just on the basis of the year it was built. So, I mean, in the end, like, really, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it's not even a year and it's overheating. What kind of thermal paste is this, Asus? What is it? And Asus is apparently pretty legendary for their garbage thermal paste. Not thermal paste, I'm sorry, but just, just generally cooling. So, I'm not terribly surprised at this point. But, I now have opened it up, identified that the existing thermal paste was basically a brick. It was baked to death. And I put new, high-quality thermal paste in there. This, this thermal paste, this Noctua right here, which I'll let you look at while I am finishing this. Not cheap. Not cheap at all. Worth every last red cent that I paid for it, though. Because look at what I just got out of it. This stuff has a high thermal conductivity. I don't know. It doesn't say it on here. But this Noctua has a very high thermal conductivity, which is one of the reasons I liked Arctic Silver 5, too. So, it will keep this computer cool. I have full confidence in that. Anyway, um, I hope that this has been interesting and informational. I don't normally throw in these afterwards after I do a repair video, but here's the thing. This computer, there is no excuse for this laptop being the way that it was. This thing, it has a manufacture date that's less than a year ago. So why is the thermal paste already baked on? That bothers me quite a bit, actually. Um, it, it brings into serious question whether or not I should purchase Asus products in the future. Which is unfortunate because for a very long time I've sung their praises, but in combination with the liquid metal fiasco from a previous video about a year or two ago, I'm just not feeling very confident in these products anymore. Um, I, I, I don't understand how thermal paste can bake in under a year. That just, I, I don't see that. That doesn't happen. It, that thermal paste was in a condition that I normally see on like seven-year-old desktops, not damn near brand new laptop computers. High performance for what it is, in fact. So it bothers me that this is the case. Nevertheless, if you are able to go in there and do this work yourself, if you can actually do this repair, if you can rip this bad boy open yourself, I would encourage you to consider getting one of these and doing that. It wouldn't hurt to go ahead and open it up and put fresh thermal paste using the video you just watched. Yeah? Okay. I will do a review of the computer, otherwise, in another video. That's not really the appropriate subject matter for this video. But a review is forthcoming now that I've used it for a month or two and I've dealt with this. Um, I'm going to run my encode and see if it still works. Um, that's it. You know the drill, like, comment, subscribe, and all that crap. Feel free to send me some money if this has been helpful to you. Donation link's in the description. And um, also, remember, givesendgo.com slash Jody4K. If you want to help me pay for the credit that I took this out on, <laughs> you know, I figure if this video is useful to you, that probably would be a fair trade. You know, throw me ten bucks, whatever. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one.